formed Demonic Resurrection back in 2000 as a teenager. Um, I'm just wondering what yes. it's like as a young person trying to get a metal band off in India, where I'm taking it that uh, extreme metal wasn't very common at the time. Yeah, I mean, um, extreme metal wasn't really yeah popular at all, nor was playing your own music, actually. I mean, most of the bands here would play cover songs and uh, all the... We had very few act- uh, venues. Well, we had one venue, actually, and we had colleges that would have uh, Battle of the Bands. And we had, I think, two music festivals. That's it, across the entire country. So... Uh, but but the music was always there, I think, uh, because, you know, obviously uh, the music has been here since the British came. So they always bought the the music in. So even when we had our independence, I mean, I remember my mother having her whole LP collection. So she was listening to Floyd and the Beatles and the Doors. So there was always music in India. So even though maybe not every underground band found its way here, uh, I remember you would be able to get Metallica, Megadeth, Iron Maiden, Pantera, Napalm Death uh, also. So, and there was a, f- a fair scene where people would trade uh, CDs and cassettes. And I think around the time I started is when the MP3s had kind of just kicked in in a big way and everyone was starting to get like a dial-up connection at home uh, on the net. So, yeah, I mean, we managed to get access to the music and, you know, kind of figure out that this is what we wanted to do and just sort of put it all together. Absolutely. So you were saying how, how your mum had uh, lots of CDs uh, from the, oh, not sorry, records from the Doors and, and um, artists like that. Um, do you think yeah. that was the stepping stones uh, for you to getting into metal? Like what was the first metal band that actually took your attention? Uh, well, the first metal band was Iron Maiden that a friend of mine gave me uh, on a school trip and I was blown away. I think Running Free was the first song I heard. And I was just, I was like, man, this is amazing. What is this? And then I heard Phantom of the Opera following that. And I think I just, I lost it. I, I lost my shit. Because <laughs> that, that, I mean, I'd never heard anything like that. I mean, I was obviously accustomed, thanks to my parents, to the sounds of drums and guitars, because obviously I had been exposed to that kind of music, you know, uh, which is probably why a lot of people in India don't get into forget metal but even rock music because obviously the sensibilities are very different and uh, if you don't grow up listening to those instruments they can sound very not so inviting to you or not very natural to you or not very enjoyable to you Hmm. and do you think that trend is changing in india today but do you think metal's becoming more compatible or is it still sort of falling behind a bit no, it's always it's always growing. Uh, I mean, because the internet has changed everything here. Like today, all the kids have access to me. I mean, I remember in 2003 and 2004 when uh, the social networking website Orkut was there. Uh, Orkut was a social networking website that Google had started that come out. And every second kid had a picture of Alexi Lahio as their, uh, as their display picture. And I was thinking to myself in 1999, I was the only guy who had a Children of Boredom CD. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the internet definitely changed the way the the music spread. So even today, I mean, our, our problems come from the fact that the, the audience is young in, in India. It's, you know, kids who are listening to metal. So it's definitely popular. There is a large, large following of uh, uh, of metal in India. But yeah, it's it's restricted to the industry side of it it's it's still the bastard child of uh, the independent music scene in india which is basically everything that is not bollywood is is what we call the indie scene in india yeah well on the flip side as well with the internet being sort of a big part in introducing metal onto the indian scene likewise bands like demonic resurrection are getting out on the worldwide scene as well so um, do you attribute this to things like facebook or do you think you guys are just getting better at what you're doing because metal's been a part of your scene, even if it is an underground scene for a few years now. Yeah, I mean the the internet is obviously the is the tool of the future. I mean every musician re- relies on it, whether it's through a Facebook or a Bandcamp or a iTunes or a Spotify, whatever it is. The digital age is is something that you know we bands have to sort of figure out how to use to their advantage. You know. Uh, 
you know there is a flip side yes that you may lose music sales because of downloading but it also means that you have a wider reach which you may not have had before you know yeah so uh, you know a band like us can actually build a fan base outside india without actually touring you know and those fans even if they are small in number they can be in touch with what we're doing you know this interview itself is 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 something that we are only doing because we have the you know ability of the internet i mean you guys heard about us because of the web and here we are doing an interview Do you see uh what do you see the future holding for metal in India? Do you think it can get bigger or do you think it's going to well, stay like this for for a fair while now? Well, it's it's a tricky question because it it's it largely depends on the fans here, you know, in and earlier on metal was the kind of thing that um that you listened to in your college years and then you'd sort of grow out of the phase which it was, you know. Uh and uh now i feel that is slowly changing now the question is how fast that will change you know how many generations of metal heads will pass out of the the junior college and into working life and still you know come and listen to metal bands play live and things like that you know uh we're obviously still seeing that evolution happen like for example in bangalore you will see a more older audience come out for metal gigs uh you know who have the ability to spend money on beer and merchandise and CDs and stuff like that uh similarly in bombay where i live you're also starting to see a slightly older crowd but in the other cities it's mostly younger kids who are listening to metal you know mm-hmm. so it's when that equation kind of changes that the industry will start to grow and which obviously in turn will lead to better and better things so I I'm hoping 20 20 years should be enough time for the full evolution of it hopefully. Oh, I'd be great to hear it. Uh so uh getting back to Demonic Resurrection, uh what do you attribute to your success so far? Um I think ours has just basically been the fact that we've continued to, you know, play and make music and 
sort of invest in the band really and kind of always look to go beyond where we are currently like you know in the beginning obviously it was first just getting our music out there getting our instruments uh, down you know learning to play our instruments uh, then obviously it came to marketing and getting your know, cds out at an international level then it came to making music videos then came to touring so i mean we are we are constantly growing as a band and i think the fact that we never gave up is what has sort of i think got us here today i guess you know absolutely and uh you're obviously getting a lot more popular you recently announced that uh you'll be playing on the main stage of metal days uh i think it's on july 24 yeah yeah july 24th is the date we're playing yes yes uh do you have anything special in store for that um well a lot of people ask us that but the thing is i think we just want to go and play the best show we can because i don't think most people have heard us at these festivals like for most i think at least 90% of the crowd there it will be the first time they ever watch us in concert yeah absolutely you know so i think we need to play the the hits that we have or whatever are the hits uh, considered online at least <laughs> <laughs> And uh, uh, speaking of hits, your last album, uh, The Demon King, came out uh, in July last year. Uh, you've had, yeah. had a fair while to take that in, and obviously in a lot of cases, uh, seen you play it live. Um, how do you think, yeah. with the time, it's been received? Oh, well, the re- reviews have been great. I mean, uh, for us, it's very interesting to see the feedback because it's the perspectives are so different, you know. uh for a lot of the international audience it's probably the first album of demonic resurrection that they're listening to you know so their perception is very different from india where it's the fourth album that they're listening to and you know there's a history there so but 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 largely it's always been positive you know and uh, i think as long as you're making quality music you know there are going to be people who appreciate it and the, and no matter what you do there are always going to be people who you know either wonder what the fuss is all about or just hate your guts for whatever reason <laughs> and uh can we expect a follow up to it anytime soon yes we have already started working on uh new music and i am at least hoping hoping that we won't take 4 years for the next album i'm hoping in 2 years we should be able to have the next album out excellent and uh as the mastermind of the band uh what is your ultimate goal for the monic resurrection sorry what is my ultimate what is your ultimate goal like what do you hope to achieve uh with the well uh, i think my ultimate goal would be to make a living from playing music with demonic resurrection you know to be in a metal band <laughs> i think that is my dream you know not really to own a mansion or anything but if i make enough money to get by that would be nice <laughs> absolutely and uh to finish up uh what are your upcoming touring plans Oh uh, well we've got a couple of gigs this month so in fact we're heading out to uh, the city of Hyderabad tomorrow and we have a couple of other local shows uh following which we are going to Slovenia for metal days and uh, Czech Republic for brutal assault uh if all goes well we should have some shows between those two dates as well and then the rest of the year is kind of open to see what happens you know because uh, at least in India the the shows you get booked for them like maybe 3 weeks in advance if you're lucky uh, it's a lot of last minute things happening here <laughs> <laughs> uh excellent so uh, is there anything else you'd like to add um well nothing in particular i mean uh, that's that's all right that's that's about it yeah i mean if there's anything you want to know let me know <laughs> <laughs> excellent oh well thank you very much for uh, doing this and uh for being uh, the Ankyla bookings and promotions band of the month <laughs>